Hi, welcome to this video day help, which is on the 4th of April. We're on Saturday. We're just going to be looking at uh, some US dollar pairs today. And we're going to be looking at the US dollar against the weakest currencies in the current market conditions. Now, in terms of this, um, we're going to be lo looking at lesser looked at pairs, okay? However, we make this point frequently. Don't just stick to the majors. You want to be looking at the best opportunities. So what you want to do is look for strong currencies v weak currencies. Now in a period of risk off, the US dollar will be generally firm. So basically buy it against the weakest currencies you can find. So be looking at more minor pairs, okay? Now in terms of, um, just give you an illustration of why we are so focused on the lesser looked at pairs. If we took a major, let's say Euro USD over the last couple of months, it's been a little bit more volatile from its high to its low in the period, probably about 6% move. Now go and take a look at the USD MXN, 33% from the high to the low. So the profit potential in the USD MXN has been far higher. Okay, you're trading the Forex markets, you want clear cut fundamentals, strong currency, be weak currency, you want high volatility big trends. That is what you're going to get in the more minor currencies. They're always worth looking at. Now, a lot of people will say, we well, you pay a little bit more on the pip spread. It doesn't matter because the moves are so big. It doesn't make any real impact on your profits. Now, in terms of USD MXN, it'll be one of the pairs we're going to look at. Yeah, sure, the US dollar's had a big rise. We can go a lot further to the upside. And there's some pairs we're going to look at. The USD hasn't moved that strongly to the upside yet, but it's going to in our view. Now, in terms of trading Forex markets at the moment, uh, you really do need to have uh, a fundamental perspective of the markets. In terms of picking out the really weak currencies and projecting how far the USD will go, we've got a very simple model for doing so, and then we keep our technicals very simple. Right, now what we are going to do is we are going to go and take a look at the pairs, but just before we do so, please keep in mind my view as of right now, it can change in line with the market conditions. If you want all our trading techniques, our daily technical analysis, 14 Forex pairs, you can click on the link beneath this video and get live access to our member center. You can also join our free mailing list and also get access to our Facebook pages. Right, in terms of pairs we'll look at first, it's going to be USD MXN. All right, first chart, USD MXN. Now, this is normally a pretty volatile pair, even in this period here. You can see how high the volatility has been recently, but that massive move up, bit of a correction now going north again. Now, this pair has risen strongly. Can it rise more? Yeah, it can get to 28. Um, might even get up towards the 30 level. Uh, there's other currencies we're going to look at. The US dollar hasn't really pushed up too much yet, but yeah, dollar is going to play catch up and hurt those currencies. I'll come to those in a moment. But in terms of um, the spare, we've been focused on it for a good few months and uh, we felt the US dollar was going to go higher. Record net spec short position here gets run out the market, obviously get all the stock markets falling, the pandemic spreading, massive rise, a little bit of a correction, then off north again. Uh, the way we're playing it is basically you get dips towards the 20 day move in average, we'll buy on strength. Came in pretty early there, nice close on Friday, follow through to take out this double top I think could occur, then off to the upside. Now, in terms of these markets, um, you can't trade them purely technically. You've got to know, I think, um, the fundamentals behind the chart. We do it very simply. Uh, state of the economy, well, yeah, Mexico's economy is basically wrecked. It's extremely exposed to global growth and trade, obviously. But one thing we're really looking at is dollar denominated debt in the country. The bigger the dollar denominated debt, um, the more bearish the currency is against the USD, because obviously in times of trouble, let's say, or risk off, um, you don't get so much uh, debt uh, being taken on in the country. And obviously debt has to be repaid or loans 
are called back, um, investment flows out, goes back to the USD. So that the USD is pushed up. Now, in terms of um, despair, more strength to come. And we're also looking at the pandemic and the coronavirus spread, how it impacts uh, on individual countries. And Mexico, uh, the virus hasn't really taken a big hold yet, but that is about to change. And I saw the leader of Mexico, I can't remember his name, he was saying, yeah, the worst of it will be over in about a month. No, <laughs> it's not going to be at all. Yeah, Mexico has very densely populated big cities as well. Take Mexico City, 22 million people in close proximity. That's really bad news when you've got a virus on the loose. Many of the cities in Mexico are very densely populated. And um, yeah, healthcare, not particularly great, obviously. Uh, obviously, you've got large swathes of the country where, you know, law enforcement isn't really strong. It's run by the cartels. That's not good news either in terms of controlling a pandemic. So for us, uh, this one is going higher. Um, we think we're going to get continuation of the upside. You always wait for a dip towards the 20-day moving average. But uh, in terms of a pair that hasn't moved much yet, um, well, the dollar hasn't moved strongly to the upside, but I think it could very, very shortly. Um, the pair is US dollar CNH or US dollar against the offshore spot Chinese one. So let's go and take a look at it. All right, we're on USD CNH uh, daily chart. And in terms of the US dollar, it moved up there from the lows, bit of a correction and up again. That move is very small in percentage terms. What we're doing at the moment is we're kind of coiling sideways in a tight range. It's certainly one to keep your eye on. Now, in terms of China, if you were to read the mainstream media, they've got control of the virus. And uh, if you look at the figures coming out of China from the state media, they're saying, you know, basically that the economy is back on track. They've got workers back in factories. Um, the picture is not so rosy. Uh, the virus is obviously not controlled. OK, um, China has not told the truth about the virus at all. Also, in terms of everyone going back to work in the factories, um, does that make the Chinese economy back on track? Of course it doesn't, because they've got no one to sell their goods to. It's heavily export orientated. Now, in terms of the Chinese economy, it's in really big problems on the verge of what we would call a hard landing. And I mentioned this in previous videos. Um, China, huge debts, the biggest in the world if you took the debts at government level, local government level, and just you know, a household level. Um, it, it's in really big trouble. And a lot of people just are kind of ignoring it or not thinking it's going to happen. But I think USD gets through 715, high volatility close, will be off the upside and looking for 30% uh, on the upside towards the 10 level. That would be really fair value for the dollar. The one is just historically overvalued anyway. So I think, um, yeah, big rise could come. We've got a little small trading. You can see our levels uh, and I will be adding on the breakout. So certainly one to keep your eye on. Now, in terms of the next pair, uh, it's USD Turkish here. And this pair, um, if we look at uh, the US dollar, it's had a reasonable move up from this level here. It's about 15%. So only half of what the USD has done on the Mexican peso. But I view the Turkish lira as weak as the peso or even weaker. Again, massive US dollar denominated debt. You've got a leader who's basically um, autocratic. Um, you know, he doesn't inspire confidence. Um, just massive problems in Turkey. And obviously the virus problem will impact in Turkey as well. I'm way I've been playing this is just basically bought there above the 20 day moving average stopped ourselves out there based at the 20 day moving average we'll key off it off we go get stopped out again steady up there um basically buy again on the stop behind the 20 day moving average could go 
as high as 10. You can see on the monthly chart, we're near enough the multi-year high. Okay, that big spike tail there, we can exceed that. Now, also in, in terms of these um, trades we're looking at, many of them are at new multi-year highs like USDMXN. You've got nothing to aim for on the upside technically, so you need to have a fundamental perspective on valuation yeah, to trade these pairs. I think I said that earlier, but uh, just in case I didn't, uh, yeah, some more upside here as well. You can always wait for the first move down towards the 20, then key off it. I've got a feeling this will not pull back. If we open at a new high, be straight off the upside. If that occurred, if you wanted to trade it, just tuck your stock back behind the first level of support, okay? Uh, what have we got next? Um, looks at USDMXN, let's look at USD check krona. Uh, often say, if you're bearish to the Euros, USD, sell a Euro proxy against the USD because you'll probably get a better risk to reward. Now, in terms of Euro USD, like I said, move top to bottom around 6%. This one is about 15%, isn't it? So you, you get more for your money <laughs> effectively. And uh, do get a nice strong rise up here. Inevitable correction, not too far from the 20 day move in average. We just wait for a bit of strength, come back in long. Uh, so basically more upside in this pair. How much more? At about a 15% rise, probably gonna rise about 30%. Euro's going a long way to the downside. And if you look at the proxies, um, again, heavy US denominated debt in the countries. They're really reliant on Eurozone as well. Um, not looking good for the proxies at all. This is just one. There's uh, another one we'll look at, David's USD PLN. Um, and there's another one uh, which I haven't got on my charts at the minute USD Hungarian Florida. They're all the same kind of picture. Uh, dollar dips are buying opportunities. Right, on US dollar against the Singapore dollar. We've been following this one for a while. It's moved nicely in a technical way for us as well. And what I mean by that is uh, originally came in long above the 20 day moving average here. We get a nice move to the upside, stop ourselves out below the 20 day moving average. We base out and then we just come long through the 20 day moving average, a nice surge to the upside. Again, we get stopped out, but look at it. We sit on the 20 day moving average there. That big blue pushes off. We get long again and uh, we're moving north on Friday, 150, 160, easily on the cards in this pair. Now, in terms of Singapore, uh, biggest dollar denominated debt against GDP. Um, also, it's a trading partner of China, a big one. It's heavily exposed to global trade, probably the most exposed economy. Um, so it could go down a long way. And also, it's very historically overvalued against the USD. Now, to show you the monthly chart on USD SGD, I put 160 um, in terms of the way we see the fundamentals, but uh, we could run on to 170 or 180, even higher longer term. Really like the look of this pair. So, a long way to go on the upside. We're just pushing away from the 20 day moving average now. Now, next pair, uh, USD PLN, it's a Polish Zloty, very similar look to USD Czech Krona. Again, we've got that nice rise, got stopped out, and then basically came back in above the um, 410 level. Okay, so we slip below the 410 level, back through it, and we're going to the upside stop behind the 20 day. How much more upside? Similar to Czech Krona, 15% longer term. In our view, in Poland has more US uh, dollar debt than the Czech Republic. Um, so nice looking pair for more strength. And the last one we'll look at today uh, is going to be USDZR, South African Rand. And again, um, when you get a big picture, you can see how a big trend can just run for you. Now, in terms of this pair, which you interest in it back here, 20 day moving average holds any dips and then we accelerate away from it. It's about a 28% rise, I think, from when we got interested in it. Could it go more to the upside? Personally, I think so. 
uh, South Africa had big problems before we had the stock market crash. Um, economy not great. Yeah, a lot of corruption as well. The pandemic obviously is in play in South Africa. Um, yeah, obviously, all the US dollar dominated debt is pretty moving shop into the upside. Now, um, could wait for a dip, but I've got a feeling if we take out the high, we'll just carry on to the upside. So yeah, um, there's a selection of pairs. Obviously, we do cover others, but you get the general idea of what we're doing here. And uh, it has been very fruitful in terms of, I spoke to a uh, trader, I know, and he only just got into trading the exotics. He was saying, you know, take a third of my risk exposure to the exotics and two thirds to majors and grosses, but I've made more money on the exotics than I have on the majors and crosses by a third. So it just shows you, um, you know, trading the fast moving volatile pairs uh, can be, yeah, very rewarding. And uh, yeah, I like them. I say that pretty frequently, don't I? I just do. We'll see um, basically how all these pairs pan out next week. But that is the video for today. Thank you very much for watching me as usual. Take care. Have a good day.